So the very first step was sanding the floor in order to repaint it. So we rented a tool and just sanded the ever-loving bejeebus out of it because we needed to get all the old paint off. Now, you would think this might be easy because the paint was starting to come off. However, it was not. It took a lot of work. <laughs> we have extremely sped it up in an attempt to make it look more interesting. It was monotonous at the time. It was very time consuming. And you can see I actually had to join in and redirect all of the dust that was created. Now we were both wearing respirators because it gets everywhere and it creates a lot of dust. I did eventually switch to the vacuum as you can see because you're grinding everything up. So it took a while, but it looked so much better in the end. We had a lot of fun this afternoon, basically sanding the floor with the world's largest flapping wheel, the diamond flaps. Um, yeah, that was a lot of work and I got to play with a new tool, it's always fun. So yeah, I'm gonna keep going from there and next up is the hand sand in the corners, a little oil sander, and then uh, wash, prime, and paint. So I took the orbital sander and went all around the edges. This was kind of tricky because there were some very small quarters. There was a lot more in this room than you would think considering it was just a plain basement. And it took forever. In the end though, it worked out nicely. All right. So I'm just gonna go around the room and patch all the little divots that came when I popped up the carpet tack. Um, I'm not very good at this, so I'm not gonna tell the other people how to do it. I'd love to hear what tools work best for you. I am experimenting with flexible putty knives and standard trowels. Um, yeah. So enjoy this uh, time lapse. Smooth out, ready for to go. I'm gonna spray it with some TSP, tricerium phosphate, really powerful soap, and just scrub it up, hold it down, vacuum up with a shop vac. Now just prep this to be a nice dust-free surface to prime the paint. I'm just quartering the room and having those quarters so you can paste on the post. Breaking things down with manageable sizes works for every project pretty much. And this one just means I don't miss things. Or as many things. That's not all the overkill. I'm not really worried about grease on this floor. That would imply the top layer of the floor was intact. But at any rate, I only want to paint this thing once and I don't intend on leaving this house ever, so let's do it right. You might go, oh, it's a lot of work for a book out slash coffee storage area. You'd be right. But I also just like having that paint flicking off when we were um, working out down here. The floor is just coming up at us, so it would like the original and survive the great flood of the broken tap in the laundry room and the leaking water line to the fridge and possibly something involving the uh, kitchen tap. If it held water, it leaked in this house. So it terminated a line of water that leaked in this house. 
Good times, good times. Anyone thinking that might be overkill, there's about an eighth of an inch of sludge in the bottom of this thing. So I feel justified in the amount of work I'm doing, which frankly is great because I hate doing work I don't have to do. Let's last a little bit to see if you guys down here on my level. And you can uh, see what the process looks like here. Having done this a bunch now, I've got a good handle on my uh, vacuum squeegee technique. This works quite well for getting the water off the floor. We'll be scrubbing the tile separately. Just to keep the camera down from all the painting. I have no intention to paint tile. Not there. Dirty water off. Then we went through again, just hosing everything down and vacuuming it up to make sure there was no TSP left on the floor before we started the paint process. And then we let it air dry. All right, I'm up, let's see about. It's finally paint day. I start with a quick prime. And then probably two coats of gray concrete paint. Yep, that is definitely different than what I'm used to. Just cut them in around the edges, the roller won't fit. Then we'll um, get cracking on the rolling. Hopefully, this won't take too long. Concrete floor. It's a workout room slash storage. There's good and there's good enough. Knowing what the difference is is always a personal preference, but also something I can shoot. There's so much more in my life I'd rather just paint this floor. So I'm going to minimize how much time I spend doing it. 
that makes it. This is the fun part of the project. The big transformation, crappy, flaky concrete floor to shiny paint floor. I have to take some time to cut this in semi properly. So this is a water wash up, which means you get a little dust if you don't want to, a little bit of bit with a quick finger, and you're both. But I can suggest go in one direction and then do a second coat and I get that. The first pass I'm doing the lengthwise of the room. And the second pass, I'll go the other way. Not much left now. What to do was let it dry, and then we do round two. All right. Grab the second coat, same as before, cut it. I'm gonna go that away this time. And just gonna sit you guys there, and we'll speed on through this. First things first, I'm actually gonna follow the manufacturer's recommendation for once. I mix between pans. I typically don't care enough to do this, but judging by the color of this one, Oh, thank you. Did I have two different hands here? I do. Uh... Well, I'm glad I checked. As far as I'll put on a hold until I can get it. I need a can, another can of the appropriate. Alright, tip number two. Now, wait, this can the exact same paint color. 